It is Tuesday night. It is eight o'clock. Do you know where a DJ's at? I know where I'm at in here with you. Yes, it's another DJ round table. And as always, surrounded by some great DJs here. And I got a couple guys missing right now. But uh, again, people have gigs, people have things going on. So no big deal. Uh, actually, Brentley said he's doing a dart tournament. Is in lacrosse. Hopefully, uh, he's having fun with, with that. Uh, I am a big fan of the plastic tip darts. I've always liked to play uh, 301 and cricket on the uh, machines when I can get a chance to. Uh, but, you know, it's like anything else, you know, we, we all have our little toys and fun things we like to play with. And uh, I actually love darts. So uh, hopefully they are getting a bunch of bullseyes and uh, hitting their 301s or where else their games are playing. And uh, they're enjoying themselves. And I hope you're enjoying yourself here. A couple of things really quickly, if you could do me a favor. First thing first, if you are out there hanging out on Twitch, make sure you... Uh, put some information down in the chat, ask questions and so forth. If you're on YouTube, first thing first, click the like button. Make sure you like the, like the video. Click the subscribe button. You have not done so already. Tell another DJ and also hit the bell icon. Make sure you know when we go live or video uploads. And I try to upload this on Wednesdays, uh, not on Wednesdays, on Mondays at 12 noon. Uh, and I may have a few more things going on, but we're here on Tuesday nights on Twitch as always. And if you were, we do this live. So if you have a question, you want to add it on to uh, Twitch and, uh, come over and ask that question when we're live, please do so. If not, if you have a question, critiques, criticism, comments, put it down here, uh, below on YouTube. We greatly appreciate it. And one other thing for me as well, as well as everyone else. If you notice the past few intros, we got some new music. I've been working on music. And this last episode, which going forward, I have a new intro song for the show that's done for the show. So I am the one producing it, making it uh, with the help of uh, some AI <laughs> and doing a theme song for the show. Tell me how you like that theme song. Tell me how you enjoy it. I have a couple different versions of it. I use the EDM version on this time. I have a couple other different ones. So if you want to hear something different, ask. I can see if I have it, and uh, we'll go from there. Other than that, I have uh, a half printer. Uh, some comments here from the past couple episodes. Uh, we couldn't get to them because we had guests. I hope you enjoyed the guests we had. Uh, we tried to make sure that uh, we have some unique new stuff and have some unique new people come on here. I appreciate all the guests that have come on here. And we have a returning DJ coming in here in a second or so who hasn't been on for a bit. And so there he is. There's Hunter. Hey. Hunter, how are you, sir? Doing good. Yeah. Good to see you in here and uh, <laughs> filling in for uh, DJ Brentley today. So we have a, a six person. Hopefully we'll have uh, someone else come in or at least one or two more and we'll go from there. Other than that, yeah. uh, I wanted to go through a few comments and critiques and criticism and questions we have here. Um, DJ Aga, which always great watching on YouTube, uh, during the same type of events over and over again, uh, doing the same types of events uh, over and over again can get a bit old. I always look for events, opportunities that give me a chance, uh, a change of pace. Uh, even if it doesn't pay or a little bit less than a wedding, recently I got shows to do a high-profile movie premiere for, um, South by Southwest 24 in Austin this past February. This is an event off my bucket list as well. Do you, all of you like uh, to take, do you, all of you like doing something different on a event? And do you like, would you take a lower paying gig to knock it off your bucket list? So basically he's asking, if someone came along and said, hey, you know, you can DJ for whatever it is, 
and you had it on, you're like, hey, I want to do this, but it doesn't pay well, would you do it anyways? Then the other part is, you know, do you look for other things to DJ? You're like, oh, I always do bars or I always do karaoke or I always do this. I'd love to DJ a birthday party or I'd love to DJ a, you know, again, he did a movie premiere, you know. What do you guys think? So I'm going to hit up DJ Cool <laughs> Thing, good old Hunter, uh, who is uh, here this evening. What do you think about that? Do you look for other events that you're that you may try for, or is there an event? It's someone tapping their shoulder and say, "Hey, Hunter, I want you to DJ." You know, X fill in the blank. What would be your like your ultimate fantasy event you'd love to DJ? Well, well, I usually like to DJ the same events. Like when I was at Beach Church, I did the same type of events. They were church events. And yeah, I do look for a lot of different events, uh, whatever I can get. And um, I did live my, yeah, I did get one of the best uh, events doing a middle school dance, which I've been looking for for almost six years of being a DJ, is DJing from middle school slash high school, because they're much older. And I've been doing like, you know, the fifth grade glow night. And I also did a festival. So, yeah, I look for all kinds of, of events. Okay. Is there, like, an ultimate event you would love to do? Like, would you like to go DJ at, like, you know, some EDM fest somewhere, like, like in Europe or something like that? Or is there, like, a yeah. festival or something like that you'd love to be the headliner DJ at or something? Some some place where you'd love to say, yeah, I, I did, like, Las Vegas. I was on the Strip for a night or something like that. Not really. I'm pretty happy where I am. Okay. No, it's not that's it's not too stressful with all the gigs I've been doing. It's, oh, good, so, good. And you're, yeah. you, I, I see you all, again. Uh, just to let you guys know out there. Oh, here comes Dwayne. Just to let you guys know out there. Hunter is back on YouTube. He does have a YouTube channel again. So he's team. back on YouTube with some gig locks and stuff like that. So we got to show him yeah, some love yeah. there. Yeah, I just posted a video today about Rekordbox Seven. There you go. And I, I saw that too, the update on Record Box 7. Mr. Dixon, welcome back. Welcome back. Um, mm -hmm. I, I will fulfill uh, the question again in a second here for you. So that way, oh, looks like he's trying to connect something. Um, but we got a question here from DJ Aga, which usually asks a lot of great questions. Are you good, Mr. Dixon? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear, oh. sir. But I can't see myself. I usually see myself. <laughs> um, we can see you. See you. <laughs> you okay, look good, I'm though. I'm there. <laughs> you look good. You got your smile on and everything. That's the important stuff. Right. <laughs> Give you a second or two to get ready, and I will ask you the question. But I'm going to go over to Jeff. Jeff, is there a event you'd love to do on your bucket list? Or do you look for other events outside what you normally do? And if somebody did offer you something that's unique, would you take it for less pay than you would normally charge? Just because the fact that you get to say, hey, I get to do this or that. Or if someone offer you the gig of your life, the bucket list, didn't want to pay you a lot, but you can walk away saying, I did something really cool. What would you do? Uh, I don't know. I used to think that... Um... You know, doing proms and uh, homecomings, you know, it, it was pr pretty cool, pretty fun. And it is, but it's a lot of work. Um, it is very stressful and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a long night. Um, so, so that is kind of not on my bucket list. <laughs> uh, I always have friends that ask me, um, oh, yeah, don't you want to like, you know, DJ uh, like a big festival or something? And I'm like, no, not really. I'm just not really into festival music. Um you know, weddings, um, school gigs, parties, you know, I've got a graduation party coming up this weekend. So that's high school students. Um, but it's not like a prom, you know, kind of thing. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to that. I've never done a, um, uh, an 18 year old graduation party. I've done some 16, uh, sweet 16 parties, um, that were pretty fun, you know, but, but it, de it depends on the crowd. Sometimes, uh, the kids just, you know, are a little shy and it's tough to get them on the floor and keep them on the floor. Um, so, 
I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't really have a bucket list, I guess. You know, I don't really want to go to Vegas and and headline a, a show or anything like that. I'm just that's just, you know, that's just not me, I guess. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy doing the gigs that I get. And um, but um, yeah, it, it it's it's fun doing uh, some school gigs, though. That, that That's about uh, the extent. Of, I would not go cheaper than what I am on uh, on anything that uh, that I'm currently doing just to get a, another gig, I don't think. Well, that, 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 that's pretty cool. Plus, you know, again, you, for what you give, and again, I watch people's gig logs, for what you give and what you do, I think that, you know, you could probably command twice as much and still knock it out of the park. Uh, one other thing also, which I saw today, I know you're a man with uh, a lot of uh, love for the LD systems arrays, and I have Maui 5s, and uh, you have yours. But I saw today, um, I want to say it was IDJ Now, they had, I want to say the Maui, your 28s or 44s, and then they have an additional 12-inch subwoofer that goes with it, which you can do uh, cardioid with it on the subs and double your, and add what, six or seven DB when you do that. So you could only double your base, but also add some more DB to it by doing a color, color uh, if I could talk right, in color more, uh, mode and having the additional subs for the low end for the uh, Maui's. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. I looked at it really quickly. So uh, if you saw there or not that uh, LD has additional subs, but that might offer you a little bit more base kick than carrying those big uh, 15 or 18 inch subs and just using the the Maui's and going with that. And maybe just do well, a couple of 44s. Those babies are heavy. The 44, uh, the subs from the 44s are, are just as heavy as most any 15 or 18 inch uh, okay. standalone sub. Um, but if you've got them, you know, like, um, like our friend Rick Webb here in Greensboro, he posted one recently where he, he just used them as subs. You know, he was uh, he used two uh, two tops um, on stands and then brought his Maui 44 subs. And that works fine if you've got them, you know, sure. Um, they're a little more compact than a like a 15 or an 18 inch, but they're just as heavy. So, I mean, they're like 80 pounds, you know, just crazy. 68, 72, they're, they're pretty heavy. I can't remember what the exact weight, but they're they're heavy. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you've got them, absolutely, you know, use them as subs. Uh, for me, for my uh, 28 Gen 2s, um, if I need extra punch, I'll bring a, a, an extra sub along. Um, but usually if I'm using the 28s, it's for a smaller crowd. Um, so the, the party I've got coming up on this Sunday, uh, I'm I'm not going to use them because uh, the the crowd is going to be about a hundred, and and I also want to bring lighting for. Uh, I don't want to bring my um, uh, my my light stands. I just want to put lights on top of my speakers. So so I'll do that, and you know, it just make it simple. And so, you know, it, it depends on each gig what kind of music uh, or what kind of uh, equipment you want to bring. So yeah, it's good to have a, an option though. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the one thing is that I always say this to everyone, uh, for equipment-wise, you should have more than one set of speakers and more than one option because sometimes, you know, it may be too big of a speaker, maybe too small. You may need an extra speaker or two to fill, especially you got a larger room. So it's always good to have options for sound, options for equipment, because you never know things happen. You may have to change things. So I'm going to go over to Matt over in beautiful California out there. Uh, and ask him, uh, since uh, he uh, is in the, not too far from the land of Hollywood, uh, he, maybe he has someone he wants to DJ for, or is there something you'd want to DJ on your bucket list? Or if someone offers you say, hey, you know what, uh, this, is an, this is something different you don't normally do, but we can't pay your normal rate, would you just go ahead and do it to take it? To do it, just to do something different, or you just say, "Yeah, nah, I I want to get paid. Why get want to get paid, and continue on." What would you do? Um, I would. Uh, I mean, I'd always, I've always wanted to open for like a festival. Um, I think that'd be sick. But also, I don't want to DJ for nobody. So, 
uh it better be like a big festival or at least like a con or like a concert or something just kind of get the crowd warmed up with some like dope house music type stuff um i would like i'd probably open a concert for free um if it was like a big you know big name or something um other than So they that they though they told you to bring you out to the desert for uh what uh, coachella they're talking about well there, there's two of them right there's two out in the desert uh coachella is the only big one uh I, there's still oh just i'm thinking uh there's a uh, there's stagecoach a country one too right yeah stagecoach is country so let's just say that it was for stagecoach but they wanted i mean you know start off with some edm or Diplo is taking over Stagecoach now. So like Stagecoach is now becoming more electronic focused because they have a whole tent now that's run by Diplo and it's like country EDM mashups. So uh, they like it out there too. I, I tell people all the time, everybody loves dance music. There's no way any sane person could not like a good beat like and happy music. Like who hates Levels by Avicii? That's like a song that makes you happy. Like... Uh, It's, I don't know. So even when people are like, oh, we don't want that EDM, we don't want it to be ravey. I'm like, I know what you mean, but like, I'm still going to play like 128, like high energy dance music to get people jumping and having a great time. And, um, but anyway, back to the question. Um, other than that, like, I don't really care about DJing like fancy Hollywood style events. Like, you know, I, I'm not... into background music type of gigs that's not really I, I feel like it's pointless so i don't know i have some friends that do like some celebrity golf tournaments and other more high-end type stuff but it doesn't mean that the pay is high either um i'd rather just like i'd rather get paid three or four thousand dollars for a wedding than 500 bucks for djing uh george lopez's golf tournament you know so that's my two cents Okay. So I'm going to go to Mr. Dixon. Um, if you have on a list of a bucket list, uh, if there's a place you'd love to DJ or for someone you'd love to DJ for, or if someone said, hey, you know what, we want you to do a grand opening of this car dealership or whatever it is, something different that you, you don't normally do, we can't pay you your normal rate, but we can pay you a little bit less than your normal rate. Would you take it just to do it because it's something different? Or if it's something that, you know, again, on your bucket list, like, hey, if I could DJ at, you know, this event or that event or in front of, you know, in front of the, uh, you know, a sports team, what would you do? Um, on my bucket list, I would say if it was between 2000 and 2016, I'm a Prince fan. So I would like to uh, DJ at Paisley Park or the Grand on the Glass Slam. But as far as anything else, it depends on the situation. Um, what I, what I can get out of it. Cause it, cause sometimes it doesn't necessarily have to be a money situation. If I do it for less, maybe you have a service that you can also, you know, I scratch your back and you scratch my back kind of thing. Bar. But as far as the bucket list, I always was into Prince. So Prince or any of that kind of stuff, that would be my, my go-to. Well, you know, they, you know, Prince's um, recording studio and everything like that, the family runs it. They have, a, I guess, a trust that runs it. And, you know, I, I guess you could still get called up there. Unfortunately, Prince is not with us. Um, but the thing is that you could get called up there to where he was at. And you could have an event or a gala. You know, they could come along and turn around and say, oh, well, hey, you know, you're a big, you're very diverse in Prince music. We want you to come up here to uh, Minnesota and DJ a, you know, a, a Prince party at his place. You know, he has this big, huge area, his big space. You're going to be in the recording studio, the recording area, because it's a big area. We're going to set you up and we're going to have a bunch of people there eating, you know, tacos or whatever. And we want you to spin uh, Prince songs. Um, but we can't pay you anything. We'll pay But then three. I'll say, well, well, I do beats and I do music, so there's a trade-off. There you go. Give me some studio time then. There you go. You know, that that could be it. Or it could be, hey, you know what? We'll pay for your room and board. You can take all the pictures you want. You can take pictures of your family or whatever, or someone, you know, that's that worked with Prince or whatever. Could be other celebrities that show up that, you know, that played. 
And Prince has played with a lot of people. Prince has wrote a lot of songs that he gave to other people and other bands, other groups. Uh, you know, the Bengals, one of them, you know. So the thing is that you have a lot of music out there from Prince that flo is floating around that other artists have used. And it's kind of one of the things that um, you could, you know, maybe rub shoulders with someone famous, you know. They put you up a room and board and they pay for your trip. You know, they're not going to pay for it. Let time. me, just give me a moment in, inside of the vote so I can listen to all the unreleased stuff that he did. That would be cool too. There you go. You get inside there, start listening to some of those tapes. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to go over to, uh, I'm going to go to Tommy because I know Tommy would love to open up for an EDM Fest somewhere. Uh, probably, uh, Maybe him and uh, Matt would get together and team up and uh, tag team Coachella or maybe uh, go to Europe, do something in Europe. You know, that would be kind of cool. But uh, what would be your uh, your bucket list uh, fun thing? And again, if someone came along and said, hey, uh, I know you're um, going to be uh, back here soon or you are back here. Uh, but they said, hey, you know, for a, a gig, we need you to DJ fill the blank in. We can't pay your normal rate, but we could pay you, you know, $300, but it's something different that you normally do. And it's something cool. What would you, what would you do? Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, I would definitely take uh, offers like that on like a case by case basis. Uh, kind of like what Dwayne was saying. Uh, if there's like benefit uh, to do the event, I would definitely be willing to do it for a lower rate. Uh, there's definitely places that I'm already planning on doing that for. I mean, this summer I'm looking to tap into the Chicago club scene. Uh, so my going rate that I play at a bar up in Wisconsin is going to be different than what I would play at one of those clubs because at the bar I'm playing for the whole night. It's a four hour set. We're at a lot of the clubs. It's only a hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours set. But, um, the exposure in a place like that is significantly greater. And the same thing would go for other events too, outside of a club environment. If something had the possibility for a lot of exposure, if it was like a celebrity event or something like that, I would definitely at least be open to considering it and, um, and, and maybe doing it. But then uh, for the bucket list, I would definitely say uh, like Lollapalooza uh, in Chicago, that would be super, super cool. Um, Obviously, being at the festival, like from the crowd perspective and like just thinking of being on that stage and performing to thousands of people would just be super cool. Uh, and honestly, a lot of those different festivals would be bucket list, but uh, Lollapalooza would definitely be my number one. Okay, Lala. Yeah, that would be really cool. And because, you know, being here uh, in the Chicago area, you know, you know, that's a big draw. They're going to have tons of things, tons of different stages. The other one also would be kind of cool, which is not far away, uh, just in Wisconsin. They, you know, they have their uh, fest down on the lakefront, uh, and they have a bunch of different stages going at the same time. And um, it's, it's one of the things that uh, people do that. And there's tons of stuff that goes on, a bunch of festivals throughout the city and suburbs, but you know, that Lala, you know, again, that draws international people from all across the country. That's a huge, huge draw. And that would be really cool. So uh, I'm going to end this uh, question here with my two people just across the border, barely in Indiana, just a hair over the border in lovely, beautiful in Northwest Indiana, uh, Taylor and Jordan. Uh, so for you two, I know, and I want both you guys to do it separately. I know you guys are a, a dynamic duo and a team, but we'll have I want to answers. I already know. It's I, I want I want to see what you, each one of you guys think. So I, I'm gonna go first with I'm gonna go with Taylor, ladies first. So Taylor, um, I really don't have. You want to bring your volume up a little bit? Yeah, can you put it up a little bit? Um, I don't really have anything too crazy I would do. I would probably stick with weddings. I like doing them. I'm comfortable doing them. Um, and I have to be comfortable doing something. Um, I prefer it when it's smaller. Um, but a big wedding's fine too. And I just want to be able to charge a lot of money one day and people will fly me out. I don't care who you are. If you're willing to pay me some good money, I'll DJ your wedding. It'll be awesome. And yeah, I wouldn't do it for cheap for than anything that I charge. So 
You're gonna have to pay me. Okay. Is, is there? Yeah, is there... I I have. I don't want to be at a festival. I'm just. That's not me. I like to have. I'm really good at throwing parties, and doesn't matter. You know, if it's fifty people or three hundred people. You know. There's there's nothing Weddings. on your bucket list uh, that you would no. want to DJ at. No. No, I don't really dream about things. I take it by a day by day basis. <laughs> I just get through the day and start my next day. <laughs> I have zero. No, I just, I mean, I just want to do like, you know, maybe people with a little bit more money's weddings, you know, that want to spend a little more, have it, you know, plan it. Um, it's not just DJ. I want to, you know, be able to help them plan it and do the decorating also. So I think I'd probably just stay there. Okay. So <laughs> let me ask your other half if he could uh, do something. You know, what is, what is on your bucket list? Uh, I've always kind of wanted to be Paris Hilton's ghost DJ. I'm Paris Hilton's I, ghost DJ? Well, you I, want to be uh, Paris Hilton's real DJ because I don't think Paris Hilton well, really I'm DJs. the DJ behind the curtain. Um, no, I, I really don't have anything on my bucket list. Um, as far as, like, I do always say I want to just DJ a party. Like, you know, like a just normal party. Like uh, with like me and my friends, uh, or something like that, uh, and I would probably do that for free. But oh you know, God, just did pretty much have the same answers. I thought they'd be different. <laughs> just um, have no dreams. Um, <laughs> it's not a no, bad thing I... or a wrong thing. It's there's no right or wrong answer. It's like you know, now we're now we're wants to do that. Now we're aspire to do that. But this is a question, and it's like you know, ask everyone that question. Yeah, I don't expect want to play any big festivals or do anything like that um i mean i think it would be cool to do like you know a high profile wedding or something like she said uh you know a celebrity wedding fly me out to california to do something or colorado or you know mexico or anything like that would be pretty cool to do a destination wedding um but as far as hopes and dreams <laughs> those are dead no i'm <laughs> kidding dead, dead. um i do always say i want to dj just like a I don't know what you'd call it, like a barbecue that people want to have fun at. <laughs> Music that we like, you that know, you can't yeah, just like, play. Like something where you could, yeah, just play like a bunch of filthy rap and EDM <laughs> and everything that. Filthy we, rap. Wow. Know. Yeah, I really like hip hop. Get some looks. Are, are we talking NWA street, right? and uh, like, uh, are we talking NWA and maybe uh, some. Uh, a two live crew? Or are we talking some newer stuff that uh, also uh, could be anything that defensive? Isn't, anything that isn't mumble rap? Yeah, mumble okay. rap. No. I will have to say that I've been listening to a couple of those new Drake songs, and I can't, I can't stop listening to them. The, uh, Ken, Kendrick, those Kendrick songs are terrible. I said it. You're your team, Drake. <laughs> I don't know no, if the, I'm team. The Kendrick Drake. songs are awful. That I mean, that, they're not like you. us was on the radio like eight times on my drive that was an hour and a half to LA and I could not st I hate Kendrick Lamar. I, I like that one. I think he I think that one's better to be honest. No, but. no nobody's better than Drake. Drake's <laughs> one of the best rappers. I think Drake is I think Drake is still the best, but that I don't uh, know. not like us is definitely but... I think the best song. I, I wouldn't so say he's one of the best rappers. I, I think he has some good music. I think there's some better rappers out there, but I think he I think he deserves, you know uh, I, I think he deserves a good time to listen to. He has some good stuff. And you got to remember, he also, you know, he was on TV before, you know, he was younger. So the thing is that he is someone who um, I think as a performer uh, is someone to pay attention to. Uh, not every song you're going to hit is going to be 100%. It's like everyone, you're going to have some good stuff. You're going to have some stuff like, okay, it's okay. But again, if you like his music, hey, no problem. Just like there's tons of people who like Taylor Swift. There's tons of people who like other artists like Cardi B or something like that. Whoever you like for artists, you like them. If you're a country music fan, if you're a rock fan, if you're a pop fan, EDM fan, everybody likes different things. There's no right or wrong. And again, if you want to have a party, 
and you want to DJ it, just I I will send you my address so you can invite Tracy and I over there because you know you I can come over and visit you guys. But <laughs> we throw good parties. I do like oh, to there throw. we go. We see? throw a hell of a party. So yeah, I just, like to throw a party. Uh, yeah. So yeah, just I, really I just inv- I just invited myself into your house. So it's like you know, <laughs> That's tra- right. Let's tra- do it. Tracy, you should smack me. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, we usually like a good party. So. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, not that new Kendrick song. Yeah. <laughs> what about "Rich Baby Daddy" by Drake? Because the fifth graders love that song. How are fifth graders singing? <laughs> and they, they like Ice Spice as well. Oh, ice I spice. know, I know. I'm sure they do, but that's so inappropriate. Yeah, if you do proms, <laughs> do you, how how many times do you, does that song get requested, and do you play it? Uh, I did. I did two proms this past weekend, Friday and Saturday. I I think out of all the requests, the most requests were for "Sexy Red." Yeah, See, get it. Okay, se- get it sexy. Get, on, get yeah, it so sexy. Like, uh, and ski. Do you play it? Yeah, uh, I did. Yeah, I played it clean. We the were clean versions. Yeah, please. No sexy red. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't play "Rich Baby Daddy." Bad at us. The principal told us no. R- oh, "Rich Baby Daddy." <laughs> Sexy red in general. He was like, Blue Rilla is really hot right now, too. <laughs> sexy red, not not sound bad. She, it, you know, I'm all for rap. I'm all for artists expressing themselves, but you know, I'm I'm sorry. It, it's she's very very late in in foul language, and it's hard because it, she doesn't make innuendos and things. I mean, she's just very blatant and upfront with stuff. So she just, yeah, she just puts it straight out. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would even a clean version. I would be like, oh wow. But I, I want to talk to you guys about this um, that I've heard multiple times on uh, on Sirius XM uh, for music wise. We're going to talk about music real quick. Uh, Bad feeling, Oompa Loompa. You guys heard it from mm-hmm. Jaguar Twin. Yeah, I've heard it. Yes. No, I haven't. You guys have not heard it. It's just another think- TikTok thing, like just like the somebody is uh, taking like a soundbite and putting it over like a G six. It's the girl that's like, I want an accountant or someone in someone in finance. And you're gonna laugh at me, but I don't. I don't think I've ever been on TikTok. Maybe I've seen a video that was shared on Facebook from TikTok, but I don't. <laughs> I don't have a TikTok account. I don't go on TikTok. <laughs> um, I'm like a 60 year old woman at heart. <laughs> It's not a bad thing, it, <laughs> but I know on on because uh, the series XM they were uh, it was on, uh, it's been on a few times on um, on hits one, um, but it's uh, it basically he says uh, Oompa Loompa, I have a bad feeling about you in the in the video, and it it's something that it's like two and a half minutes long, so it's designed for the TikTok short crowd. Uh, there's two videos of it, um. And it came out in January, the end of January, on uh, promo only. Thank you, promo only, by the way, uh, for all the clean radio edits and stuff like that. But uh, there's also a uh, a techno remix, too, out there. Uh, there's a couple of remixes. It's kind of poppy. It's kind of rappy. It's kind of between the two. But uh, this might, again, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not able to tell the future or anything like that. But this might uh, be something that people ask for. Uh, we got some comments here in the chat, which I'm going to go through very quickly. Uh, Mike is saying good good day to everyone and uh, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, he said he will share the video by 12.01. I take it 12.01 Eastern Time AM. Um, I'm still waiting for a DJ from uh, Northeast USA. Um, well, again, I, we had, uh, I had here a lot, a lot of times from Maine, uh, DJ Abe Alley, uh, he's as busy with his kids. I keep bugging him to come on. He keeps saying he wants to, but he hasn't been on for a bit. I can get him back. I got to get him back on here again. That's, that's yeah, Northeast. Tell him he needs to get back here soon. Yeah. He's an awesome dude. He's, he's, one, of the, he's, he's awesome. one of the originals. Yep. He's, he yeah. is one of the OGs, uh, cool things in OG. Tommy's an OG. There's a few OGs on here that come on here. Um, Mike also says grads parties with, uh, we are a background music. Uh, they also suck in the middle between, they're also stuck in the middle between parents and kids. Very true. 
Adrian E is in the house. Adrian, what's going on? Good to see you. Um, New Picard, Kevin. Uh, he wants a DJ for Taylor Swift and Travis's wedding. If it ever comes to that, that is very, very cool. And then, um, uh, let's see here. I like, uh, New York gentleman, Mr. I like the New York gentleman, Mr. Neil Diamond. There you go. And then, uh, Mike is giving his two cents on the song, bad feeling, Oompa Loompa. He said, uh, it sucks. <laughs> it is, uh, it could become an earworm in your ear. Uh, again, like I, I've heard it a couple times, listened to series XM one in the past, uh, like week or so, uh, I've been doing stuff and driving around and you know, I always change channel, but I always try to listen to one because that's where all the new stuff is coming out on. And I guess it's great popularity on, uh, on a few different uh, social media, including um, a little bit on YouTube, look, a lot of traction on YouTube, but also the big one, uh, of course, is TikTok. That uh, drives a lot of music right now. So going on to the next question for you guys. Um, ran into this, uh, talking to another uh, DJ slash sound company, and they were getting um, a raise because they were looking to do some bigger events and actually uh, getting some arrays to raise up above people's heads. Uh, they were going to get uh, basically uh, six units for a raise, and uh, they have the equipment to raise it up. They have some subwoofers, which they'll put down the ground. I'm not mentioning names of brands or anything like that, because, you know, again, this person thinks this brand's better than that brand. We're not mentioning brands here because of the fact that it doesn't matter what brand it is. So the brand is neutral. You can stick whatever brand you want. Imagine whatever brand you want to do. Uh, but the thing is that, do you? This is a question for you guys. Do you see yourselves in the not too distant future, possibly going out and buying, hanging arrays, and doing a little bit bigger events? Be it a bigger party, be it a bigger wedding, or have you run into a wedding that you know? 2K, 4K12s or 2K12s or whatever your main speakers are in subwoofers has not been enough sound and you want to get up a little higher and get a little more reach and do 300 people. Now, Matt's different because Matt has like 45 18-inch subwoofers and a crazy RCF uh, arrays for the tops. So he kind of has, all you got to do is hang from the ceiling and he has basically an array system. But <laughs> I'm going to start with him. Um, is your next evolution you can get actual hanging arrays uh, mm -hmm. and then crank them up in the air uh, and go from there? No, because, like, if I were to, like, if I were to go to the, like, well, I don't ever do anything that big. Um, but also, like, my dual 21s can knock out any thousand person event, no problem. Um, I... Plus, like, once you get into array, like actual line arrays, you really need some sort of tuning experience and audio engineering background. So I don't really mess with that. Um, I would probably just, if it was that big of an event that I need, I would outsource it. Because um, I don't I don't purchase things that I don't have a use for, which sounds crazy, but <laughs> it's true. So, um, yeah, I would probably just pass on that. I, I don't know. I, I think you're I think you'd be the first person to go run and buy again, doesn't matter what brand it is, some arrays and put up some arrays up at a uh, wedding. Cause I've seen some DJs do it. They have uh, you know, a single uh 15 or 18 inch woofer, have a pole, and having two columns arrays on top, you know, so dual units, your 12 inch from you know, QSC or something like that, or RCF or whatever brand you want to fill in having two units. Um, I've seen a, a few DJs do that. And I do that for like weddings or for some corporate events because they give it more sound and more of a throw. Um, that's what, I don't know if uh, that would be more you're liking there, Matt, or that would still be uh, something that uh, we still be too, you think too big, but I know you like sound. Yeah. I, uh... I mean, if I really wanted to step up, I would just add two more NXLs and do them as a like single column array um, because you can reverse one, mount it to the top, and then get double the sound. But I don't, yeah, I'm not a line array person. They're expensive. They're 
uh, take up a ton of space. You have to deploy them a certain way. I'm just, I'm good. I know some people that have some, but they don't really even need them. They just don't know what's, they don't, And, yeah. yeah, and it, it's an art to work with them, <clears throat> and there's a lot of math involved in a lot of ways. And again, the people who are using them, um, I think that those uh, companies that are using them, I think that they are, uh, um, they're doing big events. But the thing is that, you know, you never know. You run into a big enough wedding or a big enough event. Or, you know, in Jeff's case, which does a lot of schools, uh, Jeff, do you see yourself not too distant future, maybe getting a couple of arrays? to go with your subs. No, um, uh, line arrays are pricey and, um, <laughs> you know, for, for the money, um, and, you know, for up to a thousand people, which, you know, I don't anticipate ever DJing more than, for more than like 750, but let's say you get up to a thousand. I mean, all you'd have to do is, um, you know, two more of your 15 inch tops, uh, and just spread the sound that way, like kind of like what Matt said. Uh, it, it, that would cover basically ninety percent, ninety eight percent of what you're trying to do. So, and it's a lot less expensive. But and yeah, it, again, the tuning and all that, I would not bother with it. Uh, I'm not planning on doing that. No. Okay. Cool. Cool. And again, I'm, I'm asking this because again, it was very cool talking to uh, this other company. A very very cool dude. And uh, very interesting uh, um, stuff that he does. And it's like, I was, you know, it got me thinking, like, who else would do this? And I know, cool thing, I know you like doing a little bit smaller events and stuff like that, but Array System, I could, I could see you rocking that out, like, at a huge, like, you doing the sound for a mega church or a huge party on the beach, because I know you're the best DJ on the beach down there in beautiful South Carolina, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I would you uh, in the future, would you ever think about again, think about not you don't have to get it. I'm not saying you had to get it today or tomorrow, but would you ever foresee yourself needing, hey, you know what? I'm going to buy myself a race. I'm going to buy myself a race set and have some big subwoofers. I'm going to crank them up in the air and we're going to cover this event with this sound. You ever think you're going to get to that point or you'd be like, yeah, I'll, I'll stick with my JBL eons and. You know, that's it. <laughs> I'll just stick with the uh, JBL Eons. And if I want larger sound, I'll just pull out my Ions and get two extra speaker stands and grab like a wireless transmitter and transmit them wirelessly if I want bigger sound. But other than that, I really don't need any arrays or subwoofers or anything like that. And if the mega churches, I actually use their house system and they already have, you know, arrays and subwoofers already set up for me. All I do is hook up to the house system and I'm good to go. Like okay. when I DJ, you know, when I DJ Night to Shine back in February, I use their uh I use their system. They had XLR ports right on the stage. I was able to connect directly to it. There you go. All right. You know, work smarter, not harder. Or work yeah. harder, not smarter. You know, <laughs> hopefully <laughs> smarter, not harder, because that's always yeah. the best way to go. And some some house systems are good. Somehow systems are much to be desired. So that's one thing. Always do your homework. If you run into a facility that has a house system, do your homework. Because most house systems I've run into, again, this is why I'm talking about me personally, what we run into, Tracy and I, which which Tracy was here because she would probably uh, say the same thing. Most house systems we run into are not the best sound. So that's the thing you have to look at. Churches, usually they're, they're totally different because they want great sound. Because they want the priest, rabbi, you know, whoever is up there uh, speaking, have them clear voice, and they want clear sing for the singers, and they have a band or whatever else they get going on, organists, whatever is going on, they want to make sure everything's nice and clean and clear. Everyone hears it, and it's very crisp, good sound. Uh, I'm going to go over to Mr. Dixon uh, over there in the beautiful state of Ohio. Uh, Dwayne, would you ever think about getting a set of arrays for doing events or are you pretty much happier yet now with what you got? Uh, right now, I don't see me using anything huge like that or anything I have to hang up, hang up because then you start looking at liability kind of stuff with something falls or whatever. But if I was going to do a big um, performance like that, most likely the, the venue would uh, hopefully have those already in place as opposed to me having to buy it and then, you know, 
lugging it around and setting it up. Hopefully they'll have their own house system that I can plug into and use in conjunction with my um speakers. Cause that's how I do my school dances. I use my stuff and then if I'm over by the wall that I can plug into the wall, then I get the the sound that goes that fills the whole gym. So that's how I do it. And our church got speakers inside. So whenever I perform there, I plug into the um the main system upstairs and then it goes out to all the other um speakers throughout the sanctuary. Okay. So that is the important thing. Again, I got two guys here who deal with churches. I got uh, two guys here also deal a lot with school stuff, Matt and uh, Jeff. Uh, I have two other DJs. Actually, three are DJs because, you know, T Taylor and Jordan are two different people, but they own the same company. So we have two companies, I could say, <laughs> but three DJs. And I'm going to go next to actually Tommy, which Tommy, I know he does a lot of right now, a lot of club stuff being in, in college. But I know he's done other events. Again, I had a pleasure working with him for a wedding. He's worked with me, and I know he does he does some other private events at a few country clubs and stuff. Would you see yourself ever either buying, renting, or ever having for yourself some uh, beautiful uh, rays to uh, throw up? The only thing I could see myself doing it for is if it was like a, a big school dance. Uh and if that was the case, then I would just definitely just outsource it because that's well beyond my level of understanding when it comes to audio and also uh, just like the manpower needed to have a, a line array system hung and, and properly uh, installed. And that's one of the things I, I know I you know, two people have talked about, you know, the arrays, if you had the, again, that's part of the thing is understanding them but also having the people to do that and do the rigging. Uh, and you're not talking about just putting up on a simple little truss that you put, goes up like a uh, a gig bar. We're talking about heavy duty, you know, uh, rigging that actually can lift like, you know, 700, 800, 1,000 pounds. The array doesn't weigh that much, but you're going 20, 30 feet in the air. And each one of those units weigh, you know, let's say 60 pounds, 80 pounds, 100 pounds, for each one of those units, you times about how many units you have, you get up there very quickly up to six, seven, eight hundred pounds. And you don't want that coming down on someone, hurting someone, either a someone at the event or an employee. And then the sound act as, aspect of it, of someone running a mixer and EQing it correctly to make sure that sound is proper for what you're trying to do. Uh, not only your vocals, but also for the music you're doing, and that's that's a key thing right there. There's a lot of a lot of levers to pull that you could say to make sure it works correctly, because you do not want it to sound like junk. You especially invest money into something, and I know this particular uh, person who owns the business, he has those people, he has the staff, he has you know the vehicle to move them, he has that stuff, so he has that support area but again i've seen djs a few of them that have done a raise and they have it back in the back of a van and again not raising them really high up just put on top of a pole out off the top of a subwoofer so again you can do it but you're not cranking them up 20 30 feet but i'm actually saying hey do you do 20 30 feet or even you just do on top of a subwoofer so taylor and jordan what about you guys? Would you, I know you guys do a, a lot of different events, especially with everything. Would you think about doing a raise? That would be a Jordan question. <laughs> if we good with that. If stuff. we, uh, I think Tommy said it best. It's a little bit out of my expertise. <laughs> I don't know that much about live sound. Um, if I were to do an event that big, I would rent them. There's actually a local company. They're actually a store, like an audio store, and he has his own company. Great way to get a stock, huh? But um, he rents that stuff out, and they're, you know, if I had a gig that big, I would probably just call him. We do uh, work for a guy who does a 2,000-kid school dance, and we do rent 
and fly the line arrays with the whole system and blow plenty plenty of circuit breakers. So we're going to ask really quickly if someone oh, this is a question for everyone in the room. I just want to see a show of hands real quickly. If you had a chance, and again, Jordan said, you know, he knows someone he could rent the the, the the system. If you had a chance to work with someone who has set arrays, who flies them, does everything, and would teach you one how to use them properly, how to use them safely, and how to EQ them and show you all the equipment you need to have, all the the, the mixer, everything, how to do everything. And you find out it's really not that much more difficult than standard speakers. Again, there's more steps for safety, more steps because more robust systems for uh, lifting stuff in the air. But if you had to, if you did that and you had the opportunity to do that, would you? Would if someone said, hey, you know, uh, Hunter, come work with me for uh, three weeks uh, every Saturday. I've got a gig. I'm flying speakers. I'm doing this. I will teach you to do that. I, I just want to see a show of hands. Who here would take an opportunity like that to learn how to run a speaker system like that? Are we uh, buying the speakers afterwards? No, 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 not buying the speakers. Learning. Learn how to run them. You're, you're, you're not to buy anything. Just learn how to run them and how to operate them and, and learn how to do arrays. So three of us would do that. And the, re the reason why I would do it personally is because of the fact that I love sound. I love the technical side of things. And I think and I understand a lot of the technical side of arrays because if you understand the technical side of arrays, you also understand line arrays. You understand what we use, the little J8s and the uh, Evolve 50s and stuff like that. And you get a better appreciation how they work, what they can do and what they can't do. And I think that right there helps out a lot of that aspect of things understand the limitation of things and how to do things also safely because you know like today i was watching a video on this is at a concert so they were doing a big array i want to say it was like uh 10 or 12 units um and they're lifting it and it's all with power equipment they're not actually they're not cranking anything they're actually using motors and stuff like that to lift it up and every single one of them had hard hats on. They had the area blocked off. And they had guys further back. And they actually had also a uh, a tether line going up there to make sure it wouldn't sway. So they, they did all the stuff to make sure they could get the array in the right spot to hang it onto a huge truss that is for a concert. I'm not talking about like, you know, a backyard party or a, even a good-sized wedding of four or 500 people. I'm talking about, you know, uh, you know, something you're going to have five, ten thousand 10,000 people in a stadium doing it, and you have this huge stage for whatever the concert is. So it was pretty cool uh, watching that because it gives you some idea of the aspects you had to go into when you start getting into that kind of stuff. And again, these are guys that have trucks with lifts and stuff like that in the back to move that. And that stuff's not light. <laughs> I know Matt has a fun time with his uh, Dual 21. <laughs> And he had a couple of fun stuff with uh, other with other subs. And uh, hey, Jeff's those, got those big subs fit in a cargo van, no problem. By the way, but you know you it's fun moving that. around. You know it's not not a single person lifts them up. You got to need a little hand. I know. Uh, no, I I push them in there myself. I take them out myself. I you're not I you're not it. lifting them up by yourself. You you need two people to no, lift up a dual ramp, twenty one. Up up a ramp, obviously. Oh yeah, so that that's the thing. You need you need extra hands when you do that kind of stuff. Uh, and I know, you know, Jeff's got a big SUV. He's got a, uh, you know, a Suburban. I, I know that uh, I have a van. Matt has a, a Tahoe, but also can rent a Suburban. Uh, who else here uses a a bigger vehicle for gigs? Who has, um, I know Tommy has a, a SUV. Uh, who else oh, has an trailer. SUV? We yeah, we rent Pathfinder. My okay. dad has Pathfinder 2015 model. <laughs> And what, what about you, Mr. Dixon? You rent you rent or I have you... a Traverse Traverse SUV. Okay. And and uh Jordan Taylor, you rent a uh trailer, you said? Yeah, because I mean we just hook it up to our Acadia and whoop, we go. We pack that thing up and Yeah, we usually get either a five by eight 
eight or a six by twelve, and you you might be you one. might be cheaper to buy buy your one. And the reason why is this: we just this... don't have space. We have no room to put it in our. It... They're only well, <laughs> I have a loophole, but they're they only cost me eighteen dollars. Oh, okay. Well, so yeah, it's like it's we had in the neighborhood we live in. We just we can't we don't have any room to put it. So for just right put, now, just put in the backyard. Just... The neighbors won't mind. We live, it's down a couple of them. A couple of them have them, but <laughs> but yeah, I, if right now it's just easier to not have it. I mean, but I know, yeah, uh, they are only eighteen dollars a day, and I, we don't rent them every gig, so we only rent them maybe fifteen times a year. Yeah, my I, our car is a pretty decent size, so that doesn't even the insurance would cost more than that. So, well, well and that, that's the things you got to look at. Plus. When you own so ugly. when you own something, a vehicle that's for the business, <clears throat> it's a totally different tax area. And that's something you gotta talk to a tax professional about because we have a business owned vehicle, our van, and that right there, it does a lot. Mikey Mike, I know you have your Chevy Astro van, uh that uh is a uh, great little two thousand Astro van. Uh, Adrian E, he's got a uh a Chrysler or Dodge uh, minivan with a stow and go, which I know a lot of guys use that. Uh, Mike says his nephew was in a group called uh, Tie Fight, Title Fight, and his wife was a lead singer of uh, Tiger Jaws. He also uh, there's a company that uh, does a lot of concerts in the uh, east side of the U.S. Uh, called Mountain Productions. Uh, they have done they have done concerts for Motley Crue, AC/DC, Iron Maiden, Journey, and many more. Uh, let's see here. Wait until Matt hits my age. He'll be hiring people to load uh, <laughs> load them for him. I'm sure he will because uh, Mike uh, actually turned 59 years old this year. Thank God, and th God bless you, Mike. Uh, you know, that's the one thing is that when you get a little bit older, you know, again, I, I'm, I'm 50 and Tracy's uh, 23. So, you know, she's still young, but... Uh, it's it's one of the things when you're a little older, uh, you do things a little differently, and that's why you know having you know uh, hire some employees that are a little bit younger, they're a little bit faster than you are. They don't mind going up and down stairs as many times as you do because you know, they don't creak as much as they go up and down as I do. <laughs> All right. Well, with that said, it comes to the end of another great show. Hopefully, you guys enjoy yourselves again. If you guys get a chance to make sure that you give us some feedback and everything. Uh, we thank you for turn it, tuning in uh, and turning in and doing everything you possibly can for the show here on Twitch. And again, if you're watching us on YouTube, thank you so much. And thank you all for subscribers to both Twitch and on YouTube. And uh, thank you, Cool Thing, for stopping by tonight. Hopefully uh, we'll thank see you about uh, getting you here uh, uh, again here and there. Yeah, I know your schedule is busy and you're rocking it out and stuff and you're having not, fun not, out there? Yeah, I'm not that busy. What? Just You're always busy. I always see you. I always see you doing crazy stuff on YouTube. And again, you get a chance to his links will be down below with his new YouTube channel. So make sure you go follow his YouTube channel. He's got some great gig logs up there, some other great stuff. But we want to thank you all for tuning in tonight. And tonight, I'm actually gonna have Dwayne take us out tonight. Mr. Dixon, would you do the honor, sir? I would like to thank everyone for joining us here on another week of the DJ Roundtable. I hope you'll join us next week. So until next time, take care and stay blessed. Good night, everyone. <laughs>